And so I'm really excited to bring this series to you. And as you know, there are several classes happening this week with the same artist team of Sarah Scheidemann and Katrina Dipner. And this is kind of modeled after what I did in Palm Springs when I was there, which is we call it the creative teaching series. And it was just a real kind of general creative arts class for any teacher. So you could be a, an elementary classroom teacher or secondary, but not in the arts, or you could be an arts teacher. But it was really about giving back to teachers and making something available that was enjoyable, that was positive. And boy, do we need it this year. And um, I can't think of a year that was more traumatic and trying and uh, really the heroic efforts on the part of teachers to keep things going. So this one's for you. And um, I really love these artists, Sarah and Katrina. They, you can see on the title slide, they have a program called Lady Lead um, that Sarah founded in Palm Springs, just working with middle school girls. And the thing that was really interesting about that is this is before hashtag me too, but a lot of things were happening that were very traumatic with middle school girls. And so we set about trying to make a program that was very gender specific and it was a community art table. And it was just incredibly successful. I know the first time we did it, we were hoping for 45 girls and we were gonna have three rotations of 15 and like 200 girls showed up. So it just really has evolved over time. But anyway, we're, I'm really glad to have them here today. They're gonna to walk us through it. I have my pen and papers ready. Um, please bear with us if you got boxes because we had 60 boxes going and we we're trying to assign materials and make them into the correct box. And Shara is on the call and she was with me and, and God bless us, we did our best. So, so hopefully, mm -hmm. hopefully everybody got everything that they needed if not supplemented. And so let me hand it off to Sarah. She's our host and take it away. And let's all have fun. Yeah, hello, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Sarah and um, Katrina and I are really excited to share this with you guys today. And like Louisa said, this program is for you all to enjoy. This is nothing that's going to like challenge you or be stressful. This should not be stressful. We're here just to have fun, craft and use craft as a form of therapy and community. And um, that's really the premise of what I believe in as myself as an artist is mostly to make people feel comfortable, make it inclusive, accessible, no matter what level or age or income you're at, that everyone can be involved. And it's really, it's not so much about like the end product, but it's just us hanging out here and sharing and um, taking time to do that, which um, seems more and more precious these days, right? So um, yeah, I, I'd like to, should we just get started? Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay, so um, as also Louisa said, Lady Lead is a program that um, Katrina and I are still running to this day. I think this is like the fifth year that we've been in production. And, um, you know, it, it's a program that I hold really near and dear to myself. It's pretty much the same thing as this, but with middle school uh, students. And um, we're going to just kind of give you a run through of, Pretty much what we do with the students and so you could see the how it works for you all as well that you could use for yourself or for your students um, a couple words that, and phrases i just wanted to like bring to your attention is that uh, you could see here on the presentation i said ugly art for a positive mindset that's like i'm really into that and then um crafting as therapy and my um, screen here is not covering this but no pressure art makes it accessible and those are just Kind of the mindset of where we're at. So today's agenda, um, Katrina and I are just going to introduce ourselves. This could be my introduction because I'm shy and I just want to make this part mine. <laughs> and then um, Katrina will go next and talk a little bit about it. Then uh, as we do in our Lady Lead class, like we'd like to go around and, you know, we'll make it quick because this is a pretty big group. So we just want to, you know, know your name, uh, where, what city are you in, where are you from, and like a random little fun fact about yourself. Um, and then we're gonna go into the social and emotional learning. What is it? How do we access it? And then we're gonna access it and we're gonna do the activity and discuss it and have a little recap and get some feedback from you all. So um, should be fun. If I had music, I'd like play the beat right now. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so this is a photo of myself, which is embarrassing, but so this is a little bit about me. Um, I'm from the Coachella Valley. Uh, born and raised, I went to Desert Hot Springs High School. 
Um, I was the first graduating class there, which was a very interesting experience. And then I um, earned a bachelor's degree in, of arts um, in film and visual culture from UC Riverside. And after that, I went on to, um, it was in 2008, the economy crashed, kind of similar to today. And so I decided I'm going to create a blog because all I had was my computer and Wi-Fi. So I created the Coachella Valley art scene. It was an arts and culture blog for the Coachella Valley where um, I, my mission was to put artists on a platform and to, you know, give them a spotlight and a chance to go on to be professional artists and live a life of creativity and their own, you know, their own imagination. Whatever the artist wanted to do, we were there to support them. And, um, you know, that just led me into doing all kinds of other things with my career, as you can imagine, uh, which led to doing music festival installations and uh, then kind of led me down a path to connect with Louisa and start doing more specialized art programs that are like highly focused for students and children and people who really need more art on like a therapeutic level. Even though everything else I was doing in the past was therapeutic, it's what I do now is a lot more intentional. So um, my own personal work, as you can see like in the back, <laughs> materials that I like to use, and um, I like to use felt and foam and things that are cheap and that give me nostalgia and remind me of being a kid because that's something that like, as we get older and older, we get so removed from it. So I like to go back to that. And um, yeah, that's just a little bit about me. I like to have a lot of fun and I like to not be intimidated by art. And I, I'm excited to join you all today and just have a little fun. If we could get dirty, that'd be so fun to get dirty together, but we can't. So we're going to keep it clean. You mean messy? <laughs> messy, yeah, yeah. Dirty, uh, messy, okay. cutting glue, glitter, you know, all that. <laughs> so, and then, whoops, I have to press it, is Katrina. Hello, my name is Katrina Dibner. Um, I came across Sarah about three years ago from Louisa, and it was such a great connection to have. Um, I didn't know she was local. I heard about her from her blog and I could like see and piece together what things she was a part of. And so it was really cool to come across her path and now be great friends and artists together. So I went to Palm Springs High School and um, I graduated from San Francisco State. I also attended College of the Desert and did art there. I was a studio major. Um, great classes. I love my teachers. I think my favorite class was um, life drawing where you got the full model it was just such a out of your comfort zone but you need to draw in 45 minutes kind of aspect so it was really cool I really liked the pressure and like kind of the um uncomfortability of being in art so I love interior design I've always been a kid who redecorated my room um took my sister's room apart and kind of you know dissected and we put it together to make it you know livable and that's pretty much my passion I love color I love um, a space that you can really feel comfortable. Nowadays, it's so important that our home and our offices are where we can fully focus, you know, understand what we need in our life, clutter, not clutter, organization, to have all that in your hands and you can really be successful in almost any way. Um, I've helped a lot of my friends like get their home offices together because they were just clutter fest. So that's mm -hmm. been my passion. I've also started learning more about community outreach with Sarah. So we do that program, Lady Lead, and it's been so much fun to reconnect with young people in the desert. Um, I remember being a kid in the desert and feel like you have to get out. You can't be here, no way. It's for, you know, we're not gonna stay in our hometown, but to be products of our hometown, I think gives a lot of encouragement to young girls. So it's been really fun to give that to our Coachella Valley students here and give them, you know, lights and perspectives of leaving, coming back, giving back to the community and starting a community young, like having a friendship young. We've pieced together a bunch of girls who would never be out in general. And to have that non-cattiness in sixth grade or seventh grade, it's great. <laughs> so we've brought a lot of girls together. So I do personal art. I've always been creative. So I actually made these earrings today. I like to make clay earrings. This is my quarantine crafts. Um, I painted on my <laughs> jeans. I painted on my friend's purses. I was like out and about because it was quarantine and I had time. 
<laughs> um, mm -hmm. Now I don't quite have time, but I still find time to do my little crafts. Um, today will be a nice one where you can kind of do this uh, experience at any moment. You can pick up a pen and paper. I always love carrying a journal and a piece of pen and a pen. Um, my favorite pens, I always have to have the right pen. And then, um, you know, drawing a landscape, drawing yourself, drawing how you feel. So we'll get into that. And that was a little bit about me. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Katrina. So um, we want to go around, because I'm sharing the screen, I actually can't really see everyone. So maybe we could um, figure out a way where everyone could just come in and say uh, their name, where you're from, fun fact about yourself. Um, sure, I can call I'm it not out. really sure. Okay, okay. I go ahead and call I, it out. Okay. Okay. So um, I'm going to pick on Janine first since she's the first person who jumped in here. So if you could just say uh, name, what you teach, where, and maybe one fun fact. My name is Janine Lopez. I teach theater at Valley View High School in Moreno Valley. And a fun fact is I am not from California. I am from a very small town in Florida that only has um, one high school and enough students that make up a graduating class of maybe 200, even to today. Wow. <laughs> so near the Space Center too. That's the only thing near here. <laughs> cool. Thank you, Janine. Nicole. Okay. Hello. I'm Nicole Marquez Johnston. I'm from Los Angeles, California. And a fun fact about myself is that I met my Scottish husband on Facebook. <laughs> Love it. Wow. wow. That's cool. <laughs> nice. Uh, Carolina. Oops, you're muted. Sorry, I live in Baywood Park, California, which is San Luis Obispo County. Um, it's considered the Central Coast of California, Cal Poly. I went to Cal Poly, San Luis Obispo, but I grew up in Riverside. And so I think it's fascinating that I've reconnected through, you know, the County Office of Ed. And um, Fun fact is that I was a figure life drawing model for probably 25, Ooh. 30 years. And wow. um, uh, yeah, for colleges, private art class, just on and on. And um, I never got as many compliments on any job I have ever done as when I'm, <laughs> and I thought, oh, this is great. I'm naked, I'm silent, and I'm motionless. <laughs> So anyway, that's just kind of a... <laughs> that was such a fun fact. Yeah. Great. I oh, love this. Thank you. <laughs> Carol. Hi, my name is... Where you have to follow that, Carol? <laughs> oh my God. I, love it. It. I don't know, not, nothing like that. But um, my name is Carol Joseph, and I'm a middle school teacher at Morena Valley. I teach at Landmark Middle School. Um, I've been teaching for 19 years, actually, but elementary school, not art. I've only been teaching art for four years now, but I've always wanted to do art. Um, I grew up in LA. I went to Cal State LA, got my fine arts degree in Cal State LA. And then I went to New York City, where I worked in an advertising agency for a while. And then I uh, came back to California to teach because I've always wanted to teach. And uh, fun fact, I grew up in the island of Guam. Wow. Wow. Teeny tiny island. <laughs> Thank you. OK, Kimberly. And my name is Kimberly Porter. I live in Yucca Valley, California. I teach in um, Palm Springs um, preschool teacher for the district. And um, fun fact about myself is, um, I don't know. I like to read. I guess that's about the only thing. <laughs> Reading is fun. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. April. Oops. Can you guys hear her? Nope. I think we're having an audio problem, April. <laughs> Oh, shoot. Well, maybe you can put in the chat for us. Uh, Ms. McFarland. Hi, I'm Terry McFarland. 
And I actually, I live up in Phelan, so that's a high desert. And I work in Moreno Valley Elementary, um, fourth and fifth grade. And fun fact, I, I have seven grandkids. And when I walk in the door, they say, what are we going to make today? Oh, I love doing art oh. with you. Oh, that's, <laughs> <perfect>. <laughs> that's great. Mm -hmm. Jennifer. Hello, my name is Jennifer. I'm currently a student teacher. Um, so I'm working towards getting my teaching credential. I'm um, getting a dual, so master's and teaching credential. Um, I'm from Norco. And then a fun fact is that um, I have pet goats. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. That's cool. That's interesting. I'm so glad good. to have you with us. Dina. Hello, I'm Dina Aslan. I teach second grade in Palm Springs. I live in Beaumont. Um, and uh, originally from the beach, don't know why I ended up in the desert, but um, uh, fun fact, I don't know, there's so many. I just, I've, I've never posed <laughs> naked for, you know, anything. So that wasn't fun. Um, <laughs> I actually, fun fact is that you're next to me, Louisa, on the screen. Um, I've been to a lot of Louisa's teaching things, and a lot of those, her 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 classes are ones that I still use when I can sneak them in in second grade, from the painting mm -hmm. to the drawing your hand to, um, and then ballroom. We did we did ballroom together for years and years, and and that's the first thing they cut, and I don't see it coming back because you can't hold each other's hands anymore. So, um, but yeah, so that's that's mine. Maybe, maybe next year. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> no. All right. Uh, Yvette. Uh, my name is Yvette Mosetti, and I teach at Rancho Mirage High School out in the desert, but I live in Beaumont as well. And a uh, fun fact about me is that I am patiently waiting for my tortoise to awake from hibernation. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Goats and tortoises. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Uh, Cheryl. Hi, I'm Cheryl Condor, and I teach at Vista Heights Middle School. Um, I've been teaching, this is my 10th year of teaching, um, and a fun fact, teaching art, and a fun fact about me is I've become a cat lady. I have four <laughs> rescue cats. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> nice. Uh, Laura. Hi, my name is Laura Wilhelm. I live in Redding, California. So that's all the way up north. And I have a custodian coming in right now. I, I'm in a meeting. Hi. I'm in a meeting right now and I'm talking. It's okay. Uh, sorry about that. Um, so uh, what else? Um, so I'm, I've been uh, teaching at University Preparatory School up here in Redding for 12 years. And um, Fun fact, um, I'm a marathon swimmer. Wow, that's incredible. Thanks. Uh, let's see, Mr. Bear, no, Troy. Sorry, I thought it said Mr. Barry, Troy. It did say I updated it. Oh, did you check, okay. <laughs> said I'm throwing you a loop. I'm Troy Barry, I am a high school teacher. I teach digital media, uh, digital film production. This is my second career of after 20 years of working in manufacturing. Oh, wow. Some interesting life experiences. Uh, let's see, Lauren. Hello, I'm Lauren Shibata. I grew up in the desert and I went to Cal Poly Slo also and studied graphic design. I worked in the industry for a few years and then um, Wanted to kind of like step away from the computer a bit and do some hands-on teaching and uh, fun things with students. So I became an art teacher. And this year they allowed me to also teach graphic design as well in my school. Right. Okay, I think I have almost everybody. Amber. Hi, I'm Amber Olson. Um, I live in Riverside, but I teach in Corona. I teach fourth grade. I try to sneak in as much art as I can. Um, I guess fun fact for me is that up until being quarantined, I'd go to Comic-Con every year. So all around me, you can see art and some things that I've uh, I purchased over the years. So I'm surrounded by art. <laughs> nice. Okay, I think the only one I'm missing is, uh, the name is Jandermar. 
I'm not sure if I have that right. Okay. Did I miss anybody? Or are we good? And, and if I missed you or you're shy and want to put it in the chat, that's okay too. All right, Sarah. Mm -hmm. Back to you. Okay. Well, yeah. Well, through. thank thank you, everyone. Yeah, that was that was really interesting. I would say, like I, you know, Katrina and I doing this, we didn't really have an idea who was going to come or what anyone was about. So it's so good to get that perspective. I feel like I know everyone a little bit more. And maybe um, I was thinking my fun fact is that I'm really good at um, parallel parking, twenty foot U hauls. It's like my big claim to fame. <laughs> What's yours, Katrina? My fun fact would be I'm <laughs> one of six and I'm the baby. So I have a lot of siblings. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All righty. Well, I love that. I'm feeling giddy right now. <laughs> so, um, so we're just going to start. And um, our program, Lady Lead, um, I, you know, I kind of want to say when we first started, it was let's create this community craft table and let's find a way to connect with middle school students um, and help, you know, kind of problem solve some uh, issues that were going on with the you know, female students of the middle school. And, you know, we started just doing arts and crafts and I feel like through there, through doing the arts and crafts, we realized really what we were doing was a form of social and emotional learning. And uh, once Louisa kind of turned me on to that term, that's when I really started to look deeper into just having a craft table where people were hanging out. And I realized that the craft table goes way deeper than just people hanging out doing fun stuff. And there's a lot of depth to it. And this depth, the social and emotional learning can be incorporated into any classroom, could be incorporated outside of the classroom. So um, we kind of wanted to give a little backstory on it. I don't know how many of you are already familiar with this type of term or this type of teaching, um, but we thought we'd just give a little bit of background so you could get it. Uh, you know, I'd be more than willing to, if um, Louisa permits, like if you'd want this presentation post this class to go back and look at just my notes and everything, like I'm more than happy to share all my information with everyone. And um, the colors are really fun. So I feel like that's kind of fun too. All right, so um, social and emotional learning. I think Katrina and I will kind of go back and forth on this. Um, so the defin there's not really one definition of it, but what I kind of piece together when finding it is that social and emotional learning is a process of developing self-awareness, self-control and interpersonal skills that are vital for school work and life success. And I think kind of the best way to put it is that it's like a holistic curriculum to go by. Um, uh, let's see. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, we'll talk about um, the effects and benefits. Oh, okay, we have about sure, yeah. Six minutes before we wanna start art making, so we'll probably move pretty quick through this. Okay, okay, thank you. <laughs> Do you wanna go for it? Can yeah, so um, for our students, social and emotional learning, we really try to go into like having empathy for students. They like create this new um, thinking where they're more friendly and more open, just going through not a, you know answering math problem or reading out loud, like they don't get the nerves and whatnot. So it's really helped them like relate to other students and um, give them more of like a, humanistic character about like being in a classroom instead of having like the stresses of like I don't know if I know the answer and things like that so social emotional learning is very um it's just giving them to be a well-rounded person in general so it gives them a little bit more empathy and you know uh not sympathy but like just to have a more human human interaction with children at younger ages and whatnot and in like older classrooms as well. Mm -hmm. Should we? Um, <laughs> um, let's see. Another thing um, kind of on that too is that we've noticed that like through this process of teaching, we've noticed a lot of our students, not that we connect with them on a deeper level, but that they are, they connect with each other as well. 
and they're able to create this like community and bond with each other that I think keep them really engaged in the work that we do. So, you know, we're not necessarily teaching them anything new, but they're captivated by our class and our class has been successful because they're creating these um, connections with each other in these creative situations and classrooms and the way that we've developed our class. Um, they, you know, we've created also just like a safe space for them to express themselves. You know, we're, we're creating space for them to like socially connect and then emotionally share how they feel and to not be scared of it. You know, it is an art class, but you know, it, it's, we give space. So we check in every day. How are you doing? We go around, we make sure everyone's good. And we have the kids share out loud and share together. And over time, it gets deeper and deeper. People are sharing more and more personal um, things with each other in this like Zoom platform, which would be the last place I would think um, you would open up. But it's really, it's been beautiful to really watch and evolve over time. So um, yeah, that that's just my little two cents. Um, so also um, another thing is that these um, skill sets are good not just like in school, but these are skills that you can take outside of school, which is like the other school, right? Which is life. And um, the, sc the skills that we use through social and emotional learning, those are going to be your everyday tools to success, to like, you know, finding careers in your path and making connections and building a life outside of school. But that being your base and your root of how you learned how to do everything. So just keeping a very well-rounded lifestyle for kids even. Um, this is, uh, so what's important to us and what I stress on the kids almost every single day is to just make something ugly and make something that's like hideous and who cares and we're just gonna go in, and we're gonna make it, you know, they start making stuff and you know, sometimes it's like not a masterpiece. I don't think it's going to be at like Palm Springs Art Museum anytime soon, but it's really not the point. The point is, is not this like end product and making art that's like going to be sold. We're just here to connect with each other. And I think by constantly reminding people that art doesn't have to be this like perfection product, it's just really relaxing and it just lets it go free. So I always start the class. I'm like, all right, today we're going to make something and it, it might turn out ugly, but we're going to have a really fun time doing that. And I feel like it, it makes it sillier and everyone's able to laugh and laugh at themselves, which I think is important when making art because like even myself, like I always say I'm a crafter and not an artist because when I paint, I get stressed out because it's not perfect. And so I don't want anyone else to feel that pressure of like, I need to do perfection, you know, and I find I can be imperfect in crafts and I can be imperfect when I'm cutting paper or where I'm drawing or, you know, anything like that. So a lot of times we just kind of flip it around and think about art as not a beautiful thing and how it's actually kind of like a really ugly thing. And um, so, I feel like it, it's so, um, the process of making it. I would say it's about the process. Yes. Like we're getting therapy yeah. while we're doing it. And we usually have a big conversation while we're doing it. So this creates a less stressful environment to make something beautiful. It's just kind of like therapeutic to kind of drip, draw and doodle. So hopefully we'll get into that real soon. Yeah, that, and so that is, um, so that's another thing in this class today, you know, the, the process that we're gonna be doing is like pushing the pen across the paper, right? The other processes that we're gonna do tomorrow and on Friday, that's like a lot of cutting. And one thing we realized, like, it's just nice to cut things. It's nice to cut paper and not cut along a line and just cut the process of cutting into it, hearing it, like feeling the scissors, like just tapping in a little bit deeper to the process of what you're doing. You know, the, it, it's, it's just enjoying it for what it is and, and nothing else more, which I think is really nice and becomes more like a meditation than like a skill set. So um, we should start to get into it almost ready. Yeah. Yeah. So we can. So today's craft activity that we're going to do 
very simple. This is things that we would do with our students that we have found just a lot of joy and pleasure in doing with them, which is as simple as drawing yourself a happy version of yourself, an angry version of yourself, or a sad version of yourself. Um, and, you know, there's, there's a bunch of different techniques. I would say Katrina's more the illustrator than I am and knows more about technique and different things. So I'm going to pass it that way. <laughs> we'll go over what we got in our craft packs. Maybe you guys all got right. this. So we have um, drawing pens. And then I got some colored paper that I'm going to use. You can use white. It really doesn't. Um, there's no, it's your preference. You can use white. So um, I took it as, let me try to draw myself and things that make me smile or like how I would be illuminated when I am happy. I feel like I'm kind of mm -hmm. vibrating. I feel like I'm excited. So our three pens, it goes from five to one and your five is going to be your thickest one. So about line quality, if you want to make an area darker to give it a shadow and a dimension, go with your five. And you can go with cross hatching, so you can kind of um, make scribble scribbles to make shadows. So I also use markers if you have markers, um, and I kind of give a depth with the thickness and thinness of a marker. And um, it's really up to you how you want to do it. You can be a little more cartoonistic, and you can be more fun, and it can be really abstract. You can draw yourself as a triangle with like a smiley face. We are not here to judge. Um, it's just something fun and therapeutic. So we have our pens, our paper, and I would look at my screen to kind of draw myself. So I'm going to use my screen as my mirror and for how I will um, depict myself. Um, we'll go into it after about like, you know, our representations of our happy, mad, sad, frustrated, however you labeled it. You can write words, you can write it, make it more of like a collage aspect. And you can, you know, you don't have to draw a full face. You could draw like your eyes and your smile, or you can really be, it's, you know, your own creativity. I have my frustration in that uh, left corner and I kind of just drew my face and I went with like a, it felt more therapeutic to do a doodle and get it a scribble going and that's how I kind of feel when I'm frustrated or angry and a little bit you know conflicted in my life and then when I'm happy I feel like I'm glowing and just a smile on my face feels good so and I kind of get some like depth with some shapes and objects like you know I'm feeling good I feel like I'm on a light so Sarah's are a little more one thing yeah go right ahead right one thing I noticed, um, you know, you had sent these to me earlier, but now that I look at it too, like you're um, angry or you're frustrated, it's like a big mess and then you're happy. It's like all those same squiggles are now organized. Ah, so, yes. you know, I'm sure you just did that subconsciously, but then it's nice to look at that and like really put them side by side and like see that that's the outcome of it. Um so, and Katrina and I will just be talking. You guys can, you know, get started and, and draw away. Yeah. And um, so Do I'm just kind of showing you. Where to start if you're doing a phase, ladies. Oh, so, that's a. <laughs> my process. Oh, so start with um, my eyes. I do like a focal point because sometimes if I don't start with my eyes, they get pretty far apart or my face will be jar large and my eyes will be tiny. So I kind of start with. I don't have like a really big face and then not a small <laughs> features. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I start with my hair because it's more of the a, like voluminous piece. Today it's not. Sometimes if, um, like for Sarah, she might start with her glasses. And so, or it's kind of like your personality, like what you um, let, like what you think about your face when you think first think. Like, are you big on your hair? Are you big on like your makeup? Do you start with your eyeshadow? So it's kind of your own representation mm -hmm. and how you would think yeah personally I always start with um like the shape of my face first because then I feel like that gives me the angle of like where I'm going and and then I go into the features but um uh so these are the ones that I did I feel like I maybe have a more comic um vibe to it but when I think about myself sad happy or angry I think I talk with my hands a lot 
like uh, if we were in person, you guys have probably all really noticed that. But, um, you know, I feel like I express myself a lot like physically. So when I thought about myself sad, I'm just kind of more mopey. And when I'm happy, I'm always like flaring my arms around Mm -hmm. and talking more excitedly with my hands. And then when I'm angry, I'm just way more tense and closed up and just mad. And for me, having text, because I'm a very visual person, I just decided to throw in text at the top. And even what the text like what does sad text look like? What does happy text look like? What does angry look like? You know, and um, you know, another thing to think about when you're pulling each of your papers also is, you know, the color of the paper. The first one I did was happy. I feel like I'm more so a happy person than I am any other emotion and thankfully. And um you know, that color just reminds me of yellow, of sunshine, of like relaxation in a way. To be able to be happy is to be relaxed, right? So I chose like a yellow piece of paper and that was just organically. And then when I wanted to express like my angry self, I chose the orange because I'm like, well, it's a little bit of happy and a little bit of like red, mad but it's not mad. I'm just angry. So it's a little bit of both. And so I chose the orange to work with. And then sad, I felt like was good on the white paper because it's just nothing. It's not even a color. You're just blob. You're just, you can't really think about anything else except your sadness. So I thought white would be the most appropriate. Thank you, Sarah. What's that? I'm going to show you guys my start. Thank you, Sarah. Oh, perfect. I started out with like, again, my facial features. So I love it. I'm going with that first and then I'll get to the outside proportion. And you know, not everything's mm-hmm. perfect. So, you know, it's re- I hate drawing my nose. I find it very difficult. Sometimes I almost <laughs> want to put a different nose on me because it's just a little frustrating. Got a little button. Yeah. So we're gonna go. These with are that. some other ones that Katrina did as well. So those are the that I think markers and I kind of illustrated mm-hmm. like just sunshine gave me yellow vibe and I actually have three different yellows in there um so I use my colors as depth so if you are working with colored pencils or if you're working with your black you can see that my brown would be a darker hash like it would be more um dense right there and my lighter colors mm-hmm. would be those little airy lines from maybe your point point zero one ten, if you want to get mm-hmm. and then my black I thought maybe you could just depict like you know it's black and white. There's not really too much going on because I feel a little bit upset. Um, so hopefully you guys can kind of feel your vibes and then kind of pick what you're going for. So mm-hmm. um, feel free to mute us at a point and put your own music on because I feel like that would <laughs> blow. Not not you. <laughs> I'm just saying. People do. <laughs> I'm not offended. <laughs> yeah, actually, I mean, that's, yeah. a, that's a, a great point. We do that with the, our students a lot, too. We'll, we always say, like, sometimes Katrina and I will just talk, and then, but we'll say, you know, we'll ask around, like, what are, so what are you listening to? And let the kids listen to their own music and let them, like, you know, they, they tell us all about what's going on, what's cool or whatever in music and you know, and, and it helps them to um, get relaxed, you know, and whatever that may look like, or get stressed out. Maybe the, the feeling of stress can kind of help to really create something great in a short amount of time, which that's a very artsy thing to do too. <laughs> I think a, another thing um, that I look at when we're doing these kind of projects with our students, um, another thing is when we're using one, piece of paper per student to do these this could be like a morning warm-up activity you know to even just start the day with the students yeah how are you feeling uh, today yeah yeah like a quick like okay let's just do a little a little quick drawing of how you're feeling and I think what's interesting too is um like how big someone draws himself on a paper also like that is always interesting and I always take note of, of that kind of stuff as well so There's, you know, and from anywhere, like, well, I feel like if a student, like, when I've seen a student draw themselves very small versus, like, draw themselves very big, 
you know, it, like maybe I spend a little they bit more time small. with the student. Yeah, the student that would draw small would maybe feel small. And then so there you can kind of know that maybe that student needs just a little bit more time to talk it through and see what's going on. So it's like there's a lot to unpack in every single person's drawing, you know, whether good or for bad. So um, but it's like it's really nice. It, it's a it's a fast way to check in and not everyone is good at using words. I think I would probably be one of those like it's easier for me to write out how I feel or just draw it out really quick. And after you draw it out, it's like, by the end, it's kind of like a little shower, you know, you're like, all right, I'm kind of over that now, <laughs> you know? Yeah, it could almost be like journaling, like, if you get your thoughts mm -hmm. out, you feel like you've already expressed it, um, you know, just, mm -hmm. that's like a great daily moment, you know, I try to journal every day at like a certain time, so I have my thoughts all in a place, and I don't feel like I'm carrying them through my day. Right. I'm playing with some One fun shapes on mine. Oh. I'm sure adding some, you know, just like shapes that could maybe bring some life to this. Maybe some flowers, maybe some hearts. And then in mm -hmm. like, we have till 4.30. So at 4.15, you should kind of be switching over to angry or I don't know which one you started with. Maybe you started with angry, maybe mm -hmm. you started with happy. So, or, or if you can only do one, because I'm only going to make if you one. Yes, are <laughs> <trying to laughs> <just doing it. laughs> right. I forget. Not everyone, you know, um, <laughs> like a doodle, a fast doodler. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm more doing? like a doodler. <laughs> Does anyone have like anything they want to share as we're just kind of drawing, talking, hanging out? I was wondering if you ever have students um, present physically oh, different yeah. than how they draw themselves. You know, like they present oh. cheerfully and then the drawing is not you hmm. know, the same. Good question I love it how I children see. present work. Um, I feel like some are so eager and ready to get it out and some it's pulling teeth, like you can't get them to express themselves. And they do great mm -hmm. work. They're a little more shy or it just depends and then once we make it a comfortable situation it seems like oh now everyone's ready to present <laughs> so you just got to get that introduction into the door because i feel like safe space space. with exactly mm -hmm. exactly so we actually had a craft called safe space and that was one of our first mm -hmm. crafts to introduce our year and these girls are like what are we making and we're like it's just gonna be on your desk this is your safe space we are going to be here to help you through school. You can talk about whatever with us. You know, it's a therapy session while you do your art. Mm -hmm. Anyone want to share some progress? Troy did. I saw, I can only see two other um, teachers. Oh, I love sharing Carolina. Very cool. She's on a roll. Well, cool. I think at this point we have about... 15 minutes and maybe we can oh. do some sharing what I've done so far playing your face so why don't we do it one at a time so okay. that we have the speaker view right cool. so, so if you unshare screen that'll make it easier okay we want to yeah, do that because I, I would love to see everyone's art yeah yeah all right okay so wow, when you're ready, you can unmute yourself and then um go ahead and show it and I, I'll put mine up this was really fun for me because wow. this week I was on the CDE call for five hours of Zoom. This is my this is my meeting face, like just really <laughs> just lay side because it's um, that many hours on Zoom. It was that's a, that's my frustrated line drawing. It's kind of Peter Max type of thing. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Looks like could be really cool. <laughs> Um, Troy, would you like to talk about yours? Sure, I can definitely say that the anger one has uh, harder or straight lines. All right. Um, mm -hmm. I also drew uh, in my brow, I drew uh, lines for, I didn't do eyebrows, but I drew lines for the, when you have those lines in your eyebrow or your brow yeah. when you tighten it all up. <laughs> and then for my happy person, I went ahead and I did more curve uh, or uh, oval lines, softer in that sense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the eyes are rounder. 
the smile. Mm -hmm. Well done. It's facing directly also. And the other one's like to the side. Very interesting interpretation. I love it. Mm -hmm. And you guys are very already open to share. I love having people who are ready. (laughs) I saw Yvette hold something up that was very cool. She's very great graphic. Oh, those lines. Yvette, can you show that again? So pretty. Oh, cool. Oh my gosh, I love the hair. The earrings, so great. Yeah. Yvette, can you unmute? Because then if you hold it up and say a little something, it comes on full screen. Yeah, there you go. Oh, neat. Oh, wow. And what, wow. what are you capturing you. there? I'm just, just happy. I, I'm usually pretty quiet sometimes. So, and then um, I just know my glasses take up a lot of my face. So I feel like they're pretty good at expressing how I'm feeling and whatnot. And my hair also is pretty big most days. So mm-hmm. also relates to kind of how I'm feeling. On bad days, it's pretty flat and good days, it's pretty big. Isn't that funny how your hair <laughs> it, it. it does. Thank you. <laughs> I saw Carolina put up her three already drawn. She's like a quick draw. Wow. Can you share that? Yeah, I love it. The, and she oh, those are great. Okay, let's see. I don't think I can pull that. I feel up. like your drawing and and my drawing should hang out. <laughs> yeah, look like each other. <laughs> Carolina, can you unmute for a second? Because then it will come up into the center screen. Okay, can you say a little something about it? Oh, um, you can hide behind it, <laughs> but yeah, <I'm> talking, <laughs> then it allows us to see. Wow, interesting. It's um, I don't know, it just. Kind of like what the fellow said, you know, you think about straight lines and curving down lines, sort of when you're sad or angry and furrowed brow and your teeth show when you're happy and your mouth is in a different mm-hmm. So, yeah, that was it. I, I recognize that one face that looks like my frustrated meeting face on the one side. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think it's really interesting too, when you're working with students of any age, recognizing cues and what faces look like based on how they're feeling. So that mm-hmm. really connects to that ability to relate mm-hmm. to other people that you you know what those things are. Mm-hmm. And you recognize them. Would anyone else like to share progress? Mm-hmm. Ooh, Miss McFarland I have on my Wow, screen. I set a flower. Carrie, can you unmute yeah. and say a little something about that? Okay, so this is this is happy, and mm-hmm. my iris are blooming, and so they make yeah. me smile. Oh, nice! <laughs> like a lot of them. Your eyes are illuminating. I mean, it's like <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Well, that's that's me. That's mine. Thank you. So I'm still working on mine. I got some hearts going on. Some oh, kind of getting a graphic vibe now. Um, I've done. Mm-hmm. This type Three third session, so I wanted to do something different, and I feel like it's groovy, <laughs> and it makes me feel like happy already. I feel like I'm on, you know, this should have a theme song already. <laughs> <laughs> I like the thought of Are you thinking about the songs. Today? Oh, am I? No, Jessica. Oh, wait, who? Oh, Jessica. No, I just drew on paper. Okay. I love seeing everyone busy working. That's actually one of my favorite things is like when we do Lady Lee and all these arts and crafts, like we go around and everyone's heads down and like very quiet. I'm like, yes. <laughs> halfway. That's like the goal. Engagement. Is everyone's focus. Engagement. Yeah. yeah engagement, engagement is like, yeah. And that's kind of, it's all that matters is that they're engaged and stopping and doing, you know. Well, something I might point out, um, that was really interesting about your program with girls and, and all of us uh, teachers know this, that it's been so difficult to get students to show up. 
wow. you know, to be present. Mm -hmm. um, but Lady Lead had such an extraordinary uh, attendance rate. And so, mm -hmm. um, you know, people I think tend to underestimate the arts, but when, it when yeah. it's something that students are really excited to do and participate in, they show up. So, you know, some of you may still be on distance learning, but just incorporating arts wherever you're able to really get students excited about being there with you. And, and you end up this, what we're doing now, I call a gallery walk, when you look at each person's piece of art and, and they talk about it, and then you give feedback that is um, so interactive and so engaging and, and part of the process of us really coming back together um, as human beings mm -hmm. and being in a learning space together. Mm -hmm. right, yeah, the, the Lady Lead program is not required uh, for the students to attend. So what's interesting is during, um, you know, quarantine COVID is that these Zoom meetups, you know, it's an after school program for them. So they've been on Zoom all day long and they have an option to come or not come to our craft class and we'll get 14 students to come by and hang out with us. And then we do another day um, once a month where we have an all schools craft hangout. And that's really where um, the community starts to build beyond their own school. And, you know, we go around and we do the same thing that we've done in here. Like, what are you working on? What are you up to? And once they show each other the work, um, then they start being able to relate to each other. And, uh, you know, they've bonded over um, learning Korean and Japanese and K-pop and like all these other activities just by showing each other their art, yeah. their faces, you know, their families, their dogs, everything. So, um it's it's a connection. Yeah. Well, so like today question. we have people from mid Central California, Northern California, yeah. right, and a space. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, I love the uh, what were the two other words besides angry, happy, and angry. I mean, Katrina and I just chose those two words. I think that those are two words that like Katrina and I kind of go into a lot. Um, you know, we're both like pretty, I would say happy, bubbly people. Um, but then Katrina and I will also like, when we're getting angry and frustrated, like we can express that to each other. So, um, but yeah, afraid, joy. I mean, these are all emotions that um, I feel like we've really gone through in the past year as well. So it could be any emotion. That's what's kind of cool. It could be anxious. I feel like that'd be kind of hard. You definitely have like, that. chewing your teeth anxious yeah. I don't know nervous <laughs> again I'm starting out my uh, um, angry and I'm going just with my facial features and then kind of just giving me like no emotions and then I'm going to kind of get crazy I think I want to be really graphic again but in a harsher way mm -hmm. Dina I'm waiting to see what you have today oh No pressure. <laughs> I had a really, I had a really hard weekend with my dad. He's old and lives alone, and mm -hmm. I found out he's been sending money to, you know, charities, oh, no. lots, lots of money. So this oh, is my no. heart. This is how I felt with him this weekend. Um, and I was just yeah. like, my hair stood up, and we had words, and so that's that's where I'm at right now. <laughs> that frustration is illustrated. It is very <laughs> mm -hmm. it's like a stress reliever, maybe uh, to scroll on that paper. Does it feel like a stress reliever? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Process it a little bit. Money. <laughs> Still go working through that stress. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's okay. Mm -hmm. It takes time, I'm sure. I could only imagine how you feel. Mm -hmm. We have about five minutes left. So in that time, you can either continue working or if you have something you'd like to share out with the group, we'd love to see it. And like I said, the easiest mm -hmm. way is for you to unmute and say a little something because then it comes up on full screen and not postage stamp size. <laughs> um, we're, we're waiting for April. April. <laughs> I love those oh, eyes. I think her audio is the one that's not working. Oh, but I'm loving your facial expression. Frazzled. I yes. love the yeah. word. 
It's great. I love the word frazzled. <laughs> I can't see much, but I can see those eyes like this. <laughs> oh, there it is. Yeah. Uh, oh, my God. That's, that's me when I, I love drink your, too much coffee. <laughs> I love your continuous line. I love a contour drawing. Yeah. Contour. Yeah, that's a contour drawing right line. here. I did it with my friend, and I kind of try to use a continuous line. Okay, so you never lifted your pen or, or not? Yeah, I tried to like kind of just keep on scribbling. That's a fun um, option. Yes, I love that. Yeah. Uh, Cheryl, looks like you're surrounded by beautiful flowers. Yes. <laughs> My Van Gogh background. When it wants to come yeah, up. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> All right, Another thing that's three minutes left. Oh, okay. I was going to say, you know, this is just to throw the idea out there. You definitely don't have to, but you know, if it brings you joy to then take these papers, especially like if you were frazzled or angry and just like rip them or like just take it and crumble it and just be like fully done. <laughs> With that emotion and toss it out, so be it. Like that's to me the really fun part is taking your ugly art of the day and just trashing it and <laughs> being okay with that. And just knowing that, you know, this is a nice exercise. It's just a release. I personally love to, to rip and crumble paper um, as my own stress relief. But yeah, so, you know, these aren't things that, uh, you know, you, you can put on your refrigerator. I mean, I'd put maybe the happy one, but yeah. <laughs> it doesn't have to be a masterpiece and it's yours and you yes. can do whatever you want with it. And I think that's <laughs> yes. kind of the point is not to always make art too precious, that we can have fun with it and, and have ownership of it. So if you mm -hmm. signed up for one of our other classes this week, we'll be doing a couple of different other activities. So we'll, we'll spend less time, you know, going over our resumes and our, the social and emotional learning, but you kind of have an idea where we're going. So the foam landscapes is, you know, creating with something that's typically a craft material, very inexpensive. I, I feel really strongly about it. I don't like teachers to spend too much money on supplies. Mm -hmm. I remember how many hundreds of dollars I was always spending out of my classroom budget or non-budget out of my personal budget. Uh, and then the paper, same thing. We're going to have fun with it. We're going to rip. We're going to tear. We're going to make some um, really interesting art pieces um, in that class. And um, mm -hmm. somebody messaged me about the symmetry asymmetry. That class was sold out very early on. And so um, if you're interested in that, email me and we'll admit you uh, to the Zoom link, although you have to put that, um, those materials together. That is definitely geared towards high school art teachers. So it's, um, it's fairly complicated, not, not intimidatingly complicated, but you know, it's, it's a little bit more, um, less, less loose and, and nature. So Anyway, we are so glad that we had this time to be with you, um, to make art together, to talk a little bit about social and emotional, to learn uh, about each other and have this time and space. And it's, it's fun uh, for me to be able to present artists that I know and work with and who do, do such great work with uh, young women. Is there anybody else that has something they'd like to show us before we sign out for today? If so, feel free to... Hi. Here's more of a finished. Ooh. Kind of. Ooh. Is that watercolor that you're adding, Terry? You no, know, it's colored pencil. Oh, okay. Over over the ink. Wow. Okay, that looks great. Thanks for sharing. I put, I put all four on my. Wow. Oh, that oh, wow. Those are great. Those beautiful. are beautiful. What are the four? Focus, tired, happy, and sad. Oh. The sad, the one with the hand? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm not sad right now. Yeah. <laughs> hey, well done. I like tired. Tired is a good one. Not sure. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Monday, not as tired, but check back on Friday. All right. Well, thank <laughs> yeah. you so much to Sarah and Katrina. Um, as per usual, Jessica, my assistant, will send out a uh, feedback form. If you'd like to give us some constructive mm -hmm. feedback, that'd be great. That um, generally... That's a good place to tell me what you'd like to see next or a class you'd like to see offered. So like I said, um, and if I have lovely comments, I pass them on to our presenters. So think of it as a way, we, we like to track data at the county. And so I always wanna offer things that are of use to teachers. So that's 
my check-in. So anyway, I hope to see you later this week if you're signed up. Thank you for spending your afternoon with us. Thank so you. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, guys. Bye. Thank you.